Roto-Grinders Daily Fantasy Podcasts are presented to you by Yahoo Daily Fantasy Sports. This week 16, make sure you're heading over to Yahoo again if you are playing paid for play fantasy sports because they've got their $1 million baller tournament back and they also ran back the guaranteed overlay. Last week was $250,000. They're doing it again. That's over a half million dollars that they are adding to the prize pool over the last two weeks. If you don't know what overlay means, what they're doing is $750,000 in entries is the max they can take and they're going to be paying out $1 million. The best value in DFS is happening right now at Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. Check them out, rotogrinders.com slash Yahoo. Use that promo code GRINDERS30 for a $30 matching deposit bonus on that first deposit. Make sure you're playing over there this week 16. It's Yahoo Daily Fantasy Sports. And we're live. Welcome to the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast. I am your host, Chris Kirkwood. Kirk Dees, I am here with Brett Hartfield, Killer B2482, and multi-millionaire entrepreneur, world multi-qualifier, uh, almost champion, and 100,000 air on a weekly basis, John Sarabian, JSU Rab. How's it going, fellas? Uh, this is our second time doing this show, so... Uh, doing a little bit uh, worse now that uh, we had our first uh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, taken All right, that's out. enough out of you. Okay, JSU, how are you doing? <laughs> I got to make this quick. Like, we got to gotta make this quick. Time, this is the second time I've heard Chris do that, and I just I can't, I can't even take him seriously every time he starts doing that. Uh, but, you know, I'm feel, feeling a little uh, ill today. I don't know if it's – I don't know what's worse, my Patriots this past weekend or the Celtics last night. Patriots are dust. Gordon Hayward's awful. We talked about it on the last, the first version, but we don't have time to do it. Uh, we, we are on a time constraint here for Christmas travel for everyone. We're recording the podcast early, so our research is a little bit less than it normally would be at this point. But uh, we do have a 12-game slate here. Um, big picture overview. Um, how's it looking to you so far at um, Killaby? What are you thinking? Yeah, so, I, I mean, when you get down to these last few weeks, I think the main thing that you need to do is when you break down the slate, just – um, there's, there's going to be a lot more subjectivity, uh, that comes into play. Um, so like what do teams have to play for? Actually, most of the games in play for this slate, uh, a lot of teams have a lot to play for. So, um, I don't think there's going to be too many teams that you're going to try to avoid. Um, but yeah, when you go in depth, uh, even on players, like what milestones, uh, do people, uh, do certain players have like bonuses and contracts, or uh, records to be broken. I think that's pretty important research to do. Uh, so it really brings in a whole new element of research uh, that you haven't been doing like the first, what, 13, 14 weeks. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely just going for guys who are playing for something, like Brett said, is, is the most important thing, in my opinion. You want guys mainly who are, um, you know, in the playoff hunt or playing for a new contract or, you know, incentives whatever it is but that's that's definitely what it, we, we've also got we've also got players on teams that are out of the hunt who are trying to make a name for themselves in football you know who are trying to earn their next contract earn their place in the league um and guys like that even like jamal williams here on this packers team that has nothing to play for but he is the, the workhorse back now this week um it's probably going to be chalky um We've got uh, some no-name new quarterbacks, uh, especially for the Carolina Panthers here, um, Taylor Heineke. Um, then uh, Tevin Coleman is certainly a guy that's playing for, uh, you know, he's going into free agency. So he has, you know, he has everything to play for on a team that is probably not going to have anything to do with him. Come, it's definitely not going to be signing him. So with Edo Smith out of the picture, um, you know, he's certainly in play. But uh, – yeah, so just um, big picture overview here. The the main slate, the main game on the slate with the highest total here at least is going to be the Pittsburgh Saints. Saints D has certainly been playing well. Uh, Steelers D has been playing pretty well. Total is fifty three and a half. It is in New Orleans, so we get that kind of narrative of uh, the Coors Field of NFL. Um, but you know we've seen it lately. The games of this isn't the offensive explosions that we've seen in the, the 
through the, the first half of the season here as, you know, teams are more banged up. Um, they're playing, uh, playing things a little bit tighter with playoff aspirations and, um, in cold weather certainly impacts a lot of these games as well. But um, the next game from there, we've got the Giants, Colts, 47 point total. Then we've got, uh, oh, we also have the Bucks, Cowboys at 47 and a half. Um, that certainly looks pretty tasty for Zeke. We'll get into. Um, and then you've got a bunch of games, you know, under 46 and under. So uh, how are we looking to attack the slate? Yes, you want, you want to go for it? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, First thing is, you know, with all the – and I'm, I'm going to say Chuck because I, I believe that, you know, Tevin Coleman, Jamal Williams um, right off the bat are going to be super, super chalky, um, especially with, you know, Edo Smith being out, like Chris said, and Aaron Jones being out. You know, that's going to make them really good plays across all sites. Um, and then I think the most important thing is where to pivot off those guys because – I could see a case where Jamal Williams doesn't pan out. I mean, Green Bay is done. Like, their, their season's over. You know, yeah, he might be playing for – maybe he's playing for, you know, obviously contract and he wasn't the starter. So, I mean, he's playing for his job, obviously. But he wasn't that great of a running back. You know, he's more of like a pass catcher. He's not a great running he's, back. He's a good He's a good blocker. He's a good – yeah, he's a good blocker. Which is so a good thing in fantasy, right? Well, uh <laughs> – Will throw the ball more, he gets, the he, and uh, he's been getting a lot of snaps. You know. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I prefer if I had to choose between playing one of those two guys, it would definitely be Tevin Coleman for me. Um, Jamal Williams, I think, is the uh, chalk play that I would consider fading more. Um, All right. Question for you with Tevin Coleman. Uh, yeah. So we always expected a, a role change for Tevin when Devontae Freeman went down. Um, but he really never got that role change because of Edo Smith. Now there's this Brian Hill guy. Are we expecting his role to be expanded or is it something that Atlanta is just never going to give him um, the bulk of that, that role? You know, I just feel, I, I don't know. I don't know if Tevin can handle a full uh, 20 touches. Um, he got, he got 11, 11 carries last week, obviously busted, busted a really long uh, touchdown um, and then had a target. So, and he, he also know. busted another one that was called back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But all carries and only 11, 11 carries. So. Right. I, mean, I, I, I don't yeah. think that Brian Hill is going to play. Like he, it, they're not going to just play Tevin Coleman, you know, 90% of the snaps, you know, that that's not what the Edo Smith injury is. I bet you it's more like a six, a 70, 30 type deal. So like, he's not going to get that full workload, but I think, you know, the Carolina team itself, it's a, it's a good matchup. If you look, um, Carolina, he did them in in week two for 107 yards on the ground. So, like, he's he's done well in this matchup before. So, I, I, I'm not afraid at 4,800 to go to him. If I was to, like, pay a premium for him, that'd be different. But with this price where he is, he's cheaper than Jamal Williams. You know, and I think Jamal Williams will be higher owned than him. Hmm. Um, well, let's talk about the, the high end because that's uh, typically that's where we're looking to for our guaranteed production is from these running backs. Zeke is going to be chalk, um, but you got to like Zeke here, right, with everything to play for for the Cowboys against Tampa Bay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love Zeke this week. Um, I, but, you know, you're going to have to make a decision, uh, Zeke and McCaffrey. McCaffrey uh, is $200 cheaper on, uh, on DraftKings. And – obviously gets the perfect matchup for him as a pass catching running back. So um, it's a, a spot too where Atlanta is now out of the playoffs. So I could see a huge letdown spot. And um, so is Carolina. And so is Carolina. So you have two teams that really have not much to play for uh, outside of just, you know, putting, putting uh, uh, plays on tape here. So um, I, I still expect McCaffrey to keep his role. Um, and you've the got question is, do you trust the quarterback? Yeah, that's you got Taylor Heineke in here. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like with, with the new uh, QB, like, d shouldn't they rely on him even more? Um, he's, still, he's still not coming well, off the field. No, so I think one thing that we're just glossing over is the fact that Cam Newton's been injured for the last, like, three or four weeks. 
And you've seen in that three or four weeks, Cam has not looked good. He's have looked you seen him throw really a uh, football? Like he can't even – it doesn't even seem like he's yeah. able to look at his target when he throws. His, like, head is straight up in the air when he's, like, right. throwing the And ball. that's my point is, like, he wasn't throwing deep balls to other receivers. He's been throwing check down passes to McCaffrey. Look at his targets in the receiving game the last four weeks, 11, 10, 7, 11. That is but, the last four weeks of Christian McCaffrey. Before that, before those four games, his pass four at, before that was eight, five, six, and six. That was when Cam Newton was fine. That's a big deal, I think. And this, guy, this kid's going to be healthy. Taylor Heineke is going to be healthy, so he's going to try and throw it. And but we don't have the threat of the run like Cam is in theory. Right. True. Yep. And so it would be a little, should be a little bit easier to, to hone in on McCaffrey. I like that. I mean, I, I think where you're going to get uh, Zeke will probably be still maybe twice the ownership of McCaffrey. Uh, I think a lot of people that will just still go towards the McCaffrey route just because of the matchup and not look at, you know, all these other, uh, other things that are in play, obviously, um, with with injuries and then the, both teams not having anything to play for. Uh, I guess I, I like that side. So wait, are you saying McCaffrey's going to be higher owned than Zeke or the opposite? No, I think I think Zeke's going to be the highest owned. Um, okay. I'm going to okay. say something pretty crazy, like maybe 40%, and then McCaffrey will be maybe somewhere around 20%. Okay, so I mean McCaffrey's a pretty good tournament pivot, you're saying, if you're pivoting off. Just because of his pass-catching ability, but I agree right. the floor's not there because – uh, p- possibly, you, you know, look at, look at what happened to Leonard Fournette last week. You know, everybody thought Fournette was going to crush last week and then he didn't get one snap in the second half. He actually, uh, returned a, I think a punt or a kickoff. Yeah. There's um, doubt. There's doubt there. And there's doubt that and, exists. And, and he said it was planned just so yes, everyone yes, it was planned. Yep. It was planned. The, yep. Like the coaches and him, they talked about it before the game how he, they were going to limit his touches. So that was one thing he did come out and say after. Yeah, they wanted to give this uh, David Williams work to see if he could be backup running back potential, basically. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, just keep researching for news. Anything that you can get from beat writers is so big on weeks 16 and 17. Like I said, like looking into contracts or milestones that these players can reach is huge. But then also no – uh, like understanding motivation and what, what coaches are trying to do with the team. Um, probably trying to solidify maybe certain roles for next year is, is also a thing when uh, teams have nothing to play for. Um, I mean, Zeke just commands so much usage. It's a game that, that they need here. It's against the Bucks, who have allowed 5.36 yards per carry um, and 12 total touchdowns uh, to running backs in the last eight games. It just seems like that's that's the safe play, right? Like that's going to be the cash play for sure. And I mean, it may be someone we just want to lock in in tournaments too. Um, so are you, you're saying you are you guys on like you're saying you guys like uh, CMC as the tourney pivot? Do you like playing them both, or are are you just going to be like me and lock in the guaranteed production from Zeke? Yeah, I think McCaffrey for me is is probably just tournaments only, just because of just being unsure of his, if he's going to get that full load um, and just not knowing exactly off like the offensive philosophy and how, how things are going to run. So um, I agree. Zeke's, Zeke's the perfect smash play. Yeah, I, I agree. I think McCaffrey's definitely just a tournament play. Um, Zeke would definitely be the cash play. And I mean, you could probably could eventually by end week find a um, way to fit both of them in a lineup. I'm sure. But uh, I, I would definitely say that McCaffrey's more of a tournament play. Zeke's more of the cash. Um, then we've got guy. We've got obviously we've got Camara um, in the kind of the marquee game at home, um, seventy four hundred. Then we've got Mar- the emergence of Marlon Mack um, in a good matchup against the Giants. Then uh, we've got Nick Chubb. And that's not even talking about um, Gurley, who's kind of the, the wild card here, is we don't know what to expect um, and what should, in theory, be an easy game against the Cardinals. Um, do they limit him? Do they not? And then there's always, you know, we always got to consider Saquon. 
Yeah, I think I think another guy too that really comes into play is uh, Joe Mixon. I mean, you, you gotta like ex- exactly everything that he did last week. Um, Cincinnati, Cincinnati has nothing to play for yet. Mixon still uh, got uh, 27 carries and four targets. Uh, no John Ross or John Ross. Uh, Tyler no, Boyd. No Tyler Boyd in this offense. So I think I think they're going to really rely on Mixon to carry the load. And he did get a price increase of uh, up to 7,100, so a perfect thousand uh, dollars. But I think this is a spot where um, they're just going to also just rely on him uh, this week in Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind Joe Mixon. Um, I do agree with you that they're definitely going to try and, like, pound him. He's, he's going to be the focal point of that offense. I don't know. I, I feel like Nick Chubb, for me, mm-hmm. is the better play in this game. Um, I think also with Cleveland being at home, I like their defense, kind of. Um, Driscoll just looked terrible. Um, I, I, I don't think he's going to have success uh, – Tyler Boyd's his main go-to guy in the pass game um, besides Joe Mixon. That's the guy he really looks to. Um, and with him out, I just – I don't trust John Ross and, and those other, you know, receivers there to get it done. And the, Driscoll's just, you know, that bad. That Yeah, he, he looked that, pretty bad when Boyd went down. Um, yeah, it, sure. it, it, he looked bad, honestly – that whole game, even when Boyd was there, yeah, did he hit Boyd on the he touchdown? Looked, he looked okay for like the very beginning. He looked over he at the like 134 yards. You know yeah. what I mean? Like this is this isn't like it, and it's not like he's running the ball all over the field. He's not like, running, he, yeah, no, at all. So like, what's his you know what's his upside? And then you take away his best options, two best options to throw the ball to with AJ Green and Boyd out, and it's like now he's got Joe Mixon, you know. Ross, who's – I don't think he's going to do much against Ward or, you know, any of those guys. And they're going to have no one. So yeah, I'm, I, I like – I'm with you. I call it a massive Chubb game here. Tons yeah, of yeah, – I ton, think I think they carries, successful. And uh, I think this defense has just had it and is looking forward to next season. And uh, they're at home. They should just run away with this one. Battle of Ohio, ste- technically still in it, right? Like the playoff race. Am I right about that? Is Cleveland still like yeah they're still like alive right uh, they still have like a shot I'm pretty sure they are yeah I so I mean like they're still playing for you know a chance to be in the playoffs so I do like that yeah I don't know if they're still alive or not but yeah that's that's what people come to for our, uh, I'm, pr- <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are we should know this don't ever bring that up. Don't, don't don't make us look <laughs> look bad like that again. I'm pretty sure they are. I, I looked this. I looked this up this morning. I'm pretty sure they're. I'm pretty in sure it. they they're are too. Not, All right. So one narrative. Right one narrative that I want to buy this this week is just Larry Fitzgerald's his last home game of his career. Um, I just feel like they do whatever they can to get this guy a touchdown. Um, we've already talked about Gurley being kind of somewhat injured, so maybe the uh, Rams' offense won't flow as as uh, as great as you know we expect it to. Um, but I just think this is a spot where it's it's going to be his last home game of his career. They're going to do everything that they can to get him the ball. Um, and then everybody else on this team just is, is basically hurt, uh, all the wide receivers. And then talent-wise, there's really nothing there. So um, I, I love uh, this spot for Fitzgerald. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I do like Fitzgerald. I like, you know, that – they're, you know, they're still throwing the ball to him a good amount. I think he had eight targets last game. Mm-hmm. Um, they were even throwing to him when they were getting blown out. So they're clearly just trying to, you know, finish this guy's career out as best they can. And uh, like you said, at home, I, they're going to try their best. I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen, you know, but they're, they're going to throw to him a lot. So, and I do like also um, one of my favorite plays in this game obviously at just the first glance, but Josh Reynolds, um, he's 4,600 on DraftKings. He had 12 targets last game. So this is what happens when Todd Gurley's like injured or, you know, and Todd Gurley still had a, a good amount of volume, but if he goes out in this game for any reason, like I think Reynolds, you know, Patrick Peterson's probably going to play a lot on um, Brandon Cooks, I would assume. So I think Reynolds at a cheap price you know, I like him. I don't mind Goff either because um, I think they might pass the ball a little bit more. 
if if Gurley's limited. So I do like that. Robert Woods has been man in the slot, so he should avoid Patrick Peterson. So I, I think he's the safe play for me. And his yeah, but his, you have to pay up for him. I'm talking about like a cheap guy. I, I mean, I agree with you, but at his price, though, like I I like his price at 6,500. I don't think that's a pay up spot at all. Um, I mean, most no, but most it's still of, a 2K difference in that offense. Sure. That's still, you know, I'm just saying comparable to Reynolds, who's 46, and he's. Woods is 66. I'm just saying that's cheap exposure to a really good offense. Right. I'm a guy who got 12 targets last game. But Reynolds will be outside a little bit more so in in the yeah, Patrick will. Peterson area. So He will. Uh, speaking of really good offenses, I love the way my boy Sam Darnold looked uh, last week, and uh, especially with uh, Robbie, Robbie Anderson. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think the, the Packers are just in – yeah, they're going to throw Aaron Rodgers out there, but he looks terrible last week. I don't think Jamal Williams is going to have much, this much success, even though he's getting a lot of a lot of love in the DFS community. I think the Jets actually come through in this one at home. Um, they they played a pretty tough game against the uh, the Texans last week, um, and there's a lot to try to build on for next season. So, any interest in this game at all, even though it's a theoretically really bad offense? Yeah, I actually have a lot of interest in this game. Uh, again, these two teams have nothing to play for. Um, but I, I really like uh, – I do like the Robbie Anderson call. Um, he's had 18 targets on uh, 62 attempts the last two weeks, which is a 29% target share. Um, been number five in air yards the last three weeks. So uh, all the numbers are there. And then Elijah McGuire, um, I mean, he's kind of taken over and has had 20 touches the last two weeks. Uh, in a spot where obviously the Packers just uh, lost out their um, their playoff hope, I think this could be a spot where um, Elijah McGuire and Robbie Anderson are a big big percentage of this offense. Uh, Quincy Inua, Inua was already ruled out today, um, so that's so. big for Robbie Anderson. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I, I like them both too. I like Anderson and McGuire. Um, he should get uh, Jair Alexander in coverage, though. Who's not? Who's not? Theory is a pretty tough matchup. He's the one good guy in the Packers secondary. He's been solid as a rook. Yeah. Yep. But I don't. I don't care. At the Def- price, it's it's still a good play. Forty five hundred on DraftKings. Defense doesn't matter. I mean, uh, nah. Killaby got away with uh, Julio on Patrick uh, Peterson last week. <laughs> hey, you got it. I mean, when you're talking about the elite uh, wide receivers, I think some of those guys are somewhat indefensible. Plus, they move Julio around, right? I mean, Patrick Peterson, uh, I don't know why the Cardinals refuse to allow that guy to play the slot, but with Julio, Julio, they they allow uh, Julio to man the slot, and then they move him all over the place. They're going to get plays open for him all the time. There you have it. Um <laughs> So, okay, let's move over to wide receiver. Um, obviously, Nuke uh, is going to be um, extremely popular, right? He should be at least um, DeAndre Hopkins, 8,600. Um, I mean, you're playing this uh, Philly secondary. They don't really have anybody to match up with from a height perspective or um, any I – don't, I don't see them being effective. I see them playing a lot of zone defense. Uh, maybe they'll be effective rushing the pass on Watkins, putting pressure on him, but Hopkins should get peppered. Agree? Yeah, I I actually have Michael Thomas. Uh, probably a little bit more love for Michael Thomas this week, but Hopkins is right there, and I don't think really, you know, it's it's tough to decipher which, which way, but uh, they both get really good matchups, uh, Thomas in the slot, and then Hopkins outside versus <laughs> these Philly corners that they basically brought off the street, so uh, you're probably right. Uh, Hopkins, um, maybe share of the offense is greater just because the saints like to run the ball so much. Um, and then you also have a Lamar Miller that's, uh, really hurt. And I, I'm pretty sure he didn't practice today. So, um, maybe it was just more of that offense is featured around Hopkins now. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like Hopkins and I, I don't know how you can't like DeAndre Hopkins in the spot, Philadelphia, just still, you know, bad against wide receivers. And he is just targeted so much, looked at all over the field. So I do like Hopkins. 
Price is up there. Um, Michael Thomas, I like. Juju Smith-Schuster, I like. Um, those guys at the high end. Julio, I wish this game mattered because I would have all the Julio exposure. I still will have some, but I would be like lock button them in if this game like mattered. He's still not practicing Thursday. Um, and, and, you know, Atlanta doesn't have anything to play for. So this should be interesting to see if uh, they shut him down this week. Um, could be some extra value, obviously, in Atlanta. He did targets. do a walkthrough today. So at least like that's like an inclination that he's looks yeah, like the, looking the, to play. But Yep. The last report says he's tentatively expected to suit up. But, um, yeah, if you remove that guy out of the Atlanta offense, I mean, obviously it opens up a lot of different things. Oh, I, I also think that Adam Thielen is in a really good spot this week. I do think that people may go to Dalvin Cook just because of the recency bias, and I think it's a terrible matchup for him. Um, the Lions have been a lot better against the run. Uh, Adam Thielen, I would assume Diggs is going to see most of Slay outside. Adam Thielen will be inside a lot, so he's going to see a lot of Nevin Lawson, who um, is terrible. So – and. I've just been picking on him all year. It won't stop this week with Adam Thielen. Um, what, any interest in any of the Pats receivers now with Gordon out? Yeah. I mean, like you guys said, this this offense looks so bad, and I think I think they just rely on their run game versus the Bills. I don't know how much they even pass the ball. Like, I could see Brady having less than 25 attempts this game. Um, they could go all to Edelman. Could yeah. be a lot of running backs, too. This is yeah. the problem with like the Patriots. More. The Could Patriots. be uh, Cordero Patterson as well. I yeah, mean, I do, that. I do expect uh, Hogan and Edelman to be, you know, getting the ownership here. Uh, obviously, Hogan's snaps should go up. Um, and then Edelman's targets probably will go up uh, in this game. But outside of that, I mean, I think their focus here is just to run the ball because uh, they look so bad passing, so. So you heard yeah, it here, I mean, fire Mich- up James Michelle. Michelle might be um, in for a heavy dose, especially if they get up. If they get up by two touchdowns in the beginning of the game, like it's just going to be run, run, run from there. So, And then James Devlin trolls. Yeah. Yeah, fun times. Um, any other – so any other – wide receivers here that you guys are kind of cut some low on plays maybe potentially that could could pay off big this week I mean will, will Amari Cooper with everyone getting burned by him last week I I think he might be a little lower owned I think it's a really good spot for him um I also do like though um Michael Gallup on the other side he's continue continuing to see a bunch of targets um so at a super cheap price, I know he had a bad game last game, but before that it was nine, seven, and six. So um, I don't mind going to him at a super cheap GPP dart. Uh, I think we should also just talk about T.Y. Hilton. The guy's been phenomenal. Um, Luck, Luck only had 27 pass attempts. They basically just won this game on the ground. Uh, Cowboys did not score at all, so they weren't forced to pass, but – I mean, T.Y. got eight targets out of Lux 27 attempts, so he's still crushing the target share. And I think the big question was, what type of health were we going to get with uh, T.Y.? And T.Y. just, I mean, he passed the eye test on that, especially that one long pass. I know uh, we talked about it in text message, and uh, he was he was asked uh, post-game, uh, like, how he felt, and he's like, I was like 70% out there, so um, – He's still questionable, still not practicing this week. Uh, he's 100% going to play, and he looked, <laughs> he looked fine to me. He looked, but, he looked 100% to me. If that's yes. him at 70%, and yeah. look at out home, when he gets to 100. At home versus the Giants, hopefully the Giants stay in this game a little bit more than the Cowboys. but Which I they mean, won't. Yeah, exactly. Would, and, would you say if you're rostering T.Y. and Mac, maybe you have to bring it back with like a Saquon? Yes. I mean, yeah. Um, Taking it, one of them is fine, but if you're rosting two, then I think you have to bring it back with somebody. Right. Um, yeah. And obviously Odell uh, being questionable uh, this week. I don't, I don't think uh, Odell plays, but what I've noticed is Evan Engram has become a, like a really big part of this offense. Um, he's, he's running a lot more routes instead of just uh, pass blocking. 
And then what they've done is they brought Sterling Shepard outside. So Sterling Shepard's not really in the slot anymore, which kind of features Ingram. Because obviously Eli doesn't have the, the best arm. The only concern I have with T.Y. in this game is just the fact that it's so easy to run on the Giants now. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's what I'm concerned about too. I think Mac is in a really great spot. Uh, the only concern with Mac is they've really just limited his targets um, and kind of just made him just a, um, an a, a attempt guy, like, which is fine. Like, obviously, if, if the Colts um, win like they did last week, he got 27 carries. So you, you're loving that. Um, but, yeah, just a spot where his pass game role really has gone to uh, Naheem Hines. So um, just – just kind of like take that as a no. I mean, but he, he got 27 carries and he only played 59% of the snaps. Right. So like his, his touch share was 23%, like 24% almost. That's, that's, you love that. And I, and I do think they're going to play from a lead. So if, if you do think that game is going to be, you know, Indy all the way, then I think Mac is the obvious, play, like you have to play Mac all over right. TY if, if, if that's what you think. Okay. Uh, we got three minutes left. Sorry. Um, so let's just quickly break down our thoughts on this uh, Steelers Saints game, how to stack this game up. If you want to take the high total here, um, how are you guys playing this? Are you, it looks like Connor is going to miss again. And uh, Jalen Samuels who has a tough matchup on the ground, but he looked awesome last week and really is effective in the passing game. And they, the Saints do allow, um, catches to running backs in the passing game. I say fire him up. Are you guys on board? Uh, I don't know if I'm all the way in on board as you guys are. So he had um, 19 carries last week. He had only two targets. He caught both of them for 30 yards. He obviously ran for 142 yards uh, against our New England Patriots. But they pretty much just kind of gave up. Like they, they, they knew that they were going to have trouble stopping the pass. So I think they put more on like stopping the receivers and they gave up some of those runs. Like they, um, I don't think the saints will be as easy to run on as the Patriots. So I'm scared of that matchup. And I, I also don't know, um, like, yeah, they'll play from behind. They're going to throw it to him, but Ryan Switzer actually played out of the backfield some, and that did worry me a little bit was they when they went like five wide or like four wide and Switzer would be in the backfield some of the time. So I don't know as if I love it as much. He's still a good play. I just don't know if I love it as much as you guys. And he got – that Switzer kid got smashed last week. I, yeah. Like I don't I, – I, he had to get concussed there. I know he went into the tent, but um, I think I think you're, Samuels, you're paying You're paying almost the same price as Kamara. I just realized that. Like – that's what you're saying. You're pretty much saying you're going to take him at Alvin Kamara price. $700 cheaper. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think Samuel's uh, value goes way up if they're coming from behind. And that's kind of what we expect. Right. I mean, obviously Vegas has it at five and wow, a half. I didn't notice he was 6,700. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Went up. From- I was thinking of Yahoo where he's 14 bucks. He's still 14. Jeez. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, uh, I think this is a spot though, that you, you want them coming from behind, uh, Samuels should have a big role, uh, in this offense regardless. Um, but yeah, we saw seven targets in a game where, where they lost. So, uh, obviously he's just going to be more valuable if, if, uh, if they're passing. All right. Quick question. Juju or AB? Juju is the better play, but he'll be the higher own play hundred percent in the DFS community. They love Juju now over AB. So I, I think AB is a really good tournament pivot. And AB probably gets Lattimore and then Schuster probably gets Eli Williams and Eli Apple yeah. and PJ Williams. Same but. sentiment. Antonio Brown's a couple hundred dollars more. And I think everybody's now on the Juju train. They, they see like how he, efficient he is with the targets. So uh, I think, I think Antonio's a great, great tournament play. And I don't think he's as bad. Like, I think people think he's like done. Like do you guys Well, need- there's like that narrative. A lot of people on Twitter are saying he's done. Yeah, I, I don't think he's that No, like, I mean, it's, it's ridiculously so over. He's no. not he's not Gronk. Right. No. He's just not able to do the same things like he he doesn't seem like he has the elite separation that he once did. But uh, he's still crafty as hell as in cheating like right. ripping the guy's arm down or whatever doing some yep. some tactic dirty tactics that he loves to do. 
Um, so chalk build real quick. What's the chalk build? Is it cheap running backs, high price wide receivers? Are we all seeing that or is it the opposite? Uh, chalk build would probably be like a, a, a Tevin Coleman, Zeke, um, and then RB3 type. Like, so, so yeah. you don't think it's Jamal Williams and Coleman or McGuire? Or- yeah, I, I, I didn't even come in with a take with the Jamal Williams, but you th- saying that he's going to be high owned, I totally disagree. I think I think a lot of people have wow. seen what he is. And um, the Jets the Jets have been pretty stingy, especially at home on D. Uh, I don't expect Jamal Williams to get off here. And he's at fifty four hundred. You're not getting um, you're not getting him at thirty five hundred like he was last week. So um, I'd rather I'd rather go with uh, Elijah McGuire on the other side of the ball, who I know is a better pass catcher. Um, so I like yeah. Elijah McGuire too, but I, I just think Jamal Williams. People are going to flock to him with no Aaron Jones. I haven't even tried to build yet, but um, if it was if it's like I will start my build and see if I can make Chubb, um, Zeke, and then so another decent. Yep, Chubb, Chubb is Chubb is a good play too. I like that. Um, we should probably get your take, uh, Kirk, uh, about your boy Kenyon Drake. I know his oh, role man. didn't change at all, and they kind of just put Balage in the Frank Gore uh, role. Like, oh, yeah. you, you staying away, you staying away from uh, Drake and. Balazs. I kind of think that the Dolphins stick it to Jacksonville, laying that laying down dead Jacksonville team at this point. And uh, I'm not sure where it's going to come from, but um, I'll look into that. I, I don't know. I just don't – they just haven't used – ever used Drake in the way that they should use Drake. And he – I don't get it. I've never get, gotten it. Um, I, I like him in theory, but Balazs now – I'm not – It doesn't playing. look like his role is changing. Yeah, you know, I don't think like it is. Still- I don't think it is changing. But, yeah. like, maybe he sees a small uptick, but they just never have given this guy much usage. Oh, oh, um, I for, I think I think uh, we forgot about our uh, our little uh, bet we made last oh, week. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh no, uh, yeah! We'll, we'll, we'll send you the PayPal. Did you write it? Did you write it down? The Venmo. The Venmo. I, I wrote it down. Yeah. The Venmo it account. Was, uh, we got to send them our Venmo. Uh, by the way, we should talk about it. it. Was it was uh it was who was gonna have more? I would assume DK points. Cook versus Ebron. And I think I think you uh you we guys said. Got, yeah, we got cook. you. Yeah, we, we won. Yeah, I had Ebron. You guys had Cook. Um, but it was something like one. I think we doubled. I think we like, know. I think we doubled. Like 1.8 points. No, I think we doubled Ebron's production. I think he doubled <laughs> Ebron's production. I think is what happened. That's one way to narrate the story. It was a runaway. <laughs> it was a runaway. Uh, uh, all right. So you know what, though? I will, give, I will give Brett his due. He did call a Jordan Howard touchdown, I'm pretty sure. I still. I think that was me. Nor did did you do that, Brett? Brett. I did that to somebody. I went went off after. (laughs) It was definitely Brett because I went off after, and then you told me to calm down. Yeah, I just uh, said I said the Bears would dominate that game on the ground, or like at least be up where Jordan Howard would be able to run. Yep. Yep. He still only had sixty yards on the ground. I know. know. All right. That's a wrap. You got a Zumba class to teach uh, JSU. Uh, Oh yeah. uh, yeah, I'm going to that right now. Well, What's the uh, – anyone got a favorite play? Uh, favorite play on the slate. I, I, I think uh, my favorite game to stack, and I know we didn't talk about it too much, but might go a little bit lower on, is the Houston at Philly. Um, not a lot of – Houston on the road, I, I just feel like they could get exposed a little bit more. So – I, I think gambling on like a Nick Foles and Ertz and then bringing it back with a Hopkins uh, makes sense. Dude, I, was, I, I, I literally was about to say Nick Foles. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, do like Foles. I, I do like Nick Foles. I do like Nick Foles. DraftKings, um, DraftKings uh, I don't know, did they know he was starting? Uh, I would it's, assume so because he's at 4,700. He's like, at 4,700. So, I yeah. I think he's a, a pun play that everyone should be considering. I think people are going to look at maybe Darnold. Um, that's, would, where I'm, I'm, that's my play. Sammy Darnold, little, uh, little Robbie Anderson um, stack, maybe a little Chris Herndon. Um, as we know, tight ends don't matter. And, um, and then just 
make make it easy. Try to get Nuke in, you know, DeAndre Hopkins in your lineup and uh, some of these high-end safe running backs. And it's going to be my plan this week at least. I will say Alshon, Foles, and Ertz is a stack that I kind of like this week. Alshon. Yeah, I have to still look into the wide receiver situation. He's 5,300 on DraftKings. Yeah, maybe this is an Ertz week. Uh, I, I, I do kind of feel the Ertz week. The Houston's – Houston's been terrible versus tight end. Tight end. They're, they're yeah. still in the playoff hunt, are they? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They're, is, that's why is, I like the full stack. Yeah, which it, is crazy. They're more than in the hunt. I've, they might have uh, – they've gotten close to even clinching, I think. And I'll tell you right now, it makes it – if you do those three guys, you can bring it back with D-Hop easy. All right. So they, they clinched uh, AFC South uh, with a, a win and then an Indy loss or a, or a Tennessee loss. Okay. All right. Uh, enjoy your Zumba class. Good luck to you. Have everyone out there have a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Uh, whatever hey, it travel is. travel safe, Brett. Yeah. Safe travels, Brett. Have a good uh, Christmas, guys. Ship over our 100 bucks from uh, Venmo <laughs> for uh, doubling your production on our first prop bet. Hey, and, I was looking to shoot it to you guys right away. Uh, and that's my dog, Phil, saying it's Dude, time we got to wrap it up. Should we, should we forget about a bet for this week? Should we just say, is that it? Is that our one week? We we we'll we'll do something off air. Maybe we'll publicize yeah, we'll, it on Twitter. We'll, we'll do something off air. We'll have to yeah. post it. All right, uh, that's a wrap. Thank you. It's RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast, and I think we'll catch you again next week. Uh, thanks a lot. Later, guys.